my top tip would be to start small, do something that you can manage day after day until it becomes a habit. Don't compare yourself to what everyone else is doing. It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. Welcome to the Health in the Real World podcast. This episode is sponsored by My Core Balance, where you can achieve all your fitness goals safely and without injury. All right, we are here today. I'm really excited to welcome Lindsay Milano. Lindsay, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Chris? I'm doing really well today. Uh, if you're a trainer, you also are into the nutrition field as well. Can you give us a, just kind of a quick background as far as who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Right now, I am working as a part-time strength coach at a local university here in Northeast Ohio. Um, I've been there about a year after transitioning through the pandemic. I was in a therapy clinic for 11 years doing the fitness program there. Um, so this has been a fun change of pace for me, and I'm enjoying that. Uh, three and a half years ago, I started with a company called Isogenics. Um, at that point in time, we had three children, and I was about 15 pounds overweight, just wanted something simple to follow to lose that weight after a miscarriage. And being a personal trainer, I knew how to work out, what to eat, but I just wanted something simple to follow because I don't like grocery shopping. I don't like meal prepping. Um, so I did some research and found a company that aligned with my values and um, just had a clean product and worked really well for me. So I've, I've stuck with that. I enjoy it and um, started helping some friends and family with their health goals. And it's just kind of grown from there. And now I'm really enjoying the resi residual income from it and um, just growing my business and seeing where it takes us. Nice. Yeah, I think there's something really valuable about just saying like, all right, I know what to eat. I, I just don't want to have to repeat it. Like you said, meal prep. You said you have four children now. Uh, and it's just like, all right, I have to do this literally every day, every week for the rest of my life. Like, just tell me what to do, right? So I, I, right. it sounds like isogenics has been a really valuable thing in that regard. Yes. I mean, a lot of people say, don't you get tired of eat, eating, sit, eating, drinking shakes, I guess. Um, and I really don't like, we have a lot of flavor choices and you can do a lot of different things with them, add things to them if you want to. But the nice thing is that you don't have to it, in 30 seconds, I can create my meal and be on the go. Um, you know, af shortly after I started, we got pregnant again with our fourth child and just knowing that the product was clean enough that I used it throughout that whole pregnancy and it was by far my easiest pregnancy. And then almost a year of nursing afterwards, um, you know, it was just incredible that I had an easy, quick, clean option to go to. Nice. And now you've been helping your friends and you have clients and, and what's the, what's one of the most important things that you tell people when let's say you first meet them as far as first steps to get healthy? Start small. Um, you know, a lot of people want to get healthy right now and they, you know, do this new diet where I'm, I'm cutting out all bread, I'm cutting out all carbs, or I'm going to work out twice a day and, and big changes just aren't manageable long term. So my, my best advice would be to just start small and create a habit that you can sustain long term because that's um, how you're going to make a lifestyle change and, and stick with it. It's not about being perfect and doing this one thing the rest of your life. It's about slowly making progress that you can stick with. So whether that's, you know, increasing your water content every day or adding vegetables in every day as your snack or, you know, getting more sleep, handling your stress, doing some self-care, um, you know, just start small, create that habit over a couple weeks and then, you know, incorporate something else small that you can live with. Right. I think that's really good advice. And I, I think, um, you know, the way that I approach weightlifting and I think the kind of a lot of fitness professionals would approach say like weightlifting is all you need to do is progress. Right. And it's the same as your daily habits. It's like, if you do better today than you did yesterday, who cares that you're not perfect yet, right? You're better. So let's just get better again. So I really like that. I like what you said. Um, big changes aren't manageable long-term. That's a great quote. I'm going to put that in the description. I think that's really good. Um, what about like six months to a year down the line? let's say one of your clients, maybe one of your nutrition clients, let's, 
they fall off the wagon like that. I'm tired of doing shakes. I'm tired of this. Like it's just too much. What's like, what's like your pep talk to that person? And we, we get it all the time. And a lot of times it's, it's way before that six month mark, you know, they might be a couple of days in and, oh my gosh, I had a bad meal today. I mean, you know what? Like get back on the wagon. Number one. Um, it's not about being perfect. Like I said earlier, it's about making those small changes and realizing upfront that you're not going to be perfect. You want progress. You want to progress over the long term. Um, and so just get back on the wagon, let your, maybe even plan in those cheat days. So you're not, you don't feel like you're restricting yourself because in our program, it's not about restricting anything from your diet. You can eat pretty much anything you want in moderation. Um, you know, so if, if you want to have pizza and ice cream one night, have it and don't feel guilty about it. Don't punish yourself by working out extra hard the next day. Um, you know, just start the next day with a shake or a healthy breakfast and, and get back on the wagon. Realize that you're not going to be perfect and don't compare yourself to somebody else. I always say, stay in your own lane, drive your own car. Um, you know, social media makes that really hard sometimes when, you know, we're comparing our everyday lives to people's highlight reel on Facebook or Instagram. And so just stay in your own lane and do what you need to do, but know that you're not going to be perfect and and you might have to get back on the wagon every single day, but as long as you're making that effort and doing those small steps along the way, that's okay. I like that. You, um, stay in your own lane. I tell my kids this all the time, clean up your own side of the street. Cause as soon as I say, Hey, Hey Cameron, stop doing that. He says, but, but Allie did this and this, and I'm like, clean up your own side of the street. Right. And yep, same thing yep. with fitness. Um, yeah. And it's not about restricting. You're right. It's not about restricting. It's not about feeling guilty. I, I really like that as far as, if you're going to eat pizza, if you're going to eat ice cream, like own it, like really own it, really eat it, enjoy it, and then get back on the wagon. Um, I just want to chime in too with this, that one of my favorite movies is Keeping the Faith. Have you ever seen that with um, Ben Stiller and Edward Norton? I don't know. No. Jenna Elfman. Anyway, he it's a priest and a rabbi. It's like the oldest joke, right? But um, the rabbi, or no, it's the priest. It's the priest. He says this. He's been a priest 40 years. And he says this great line, he says, you cannot make a real commitment unless you realize that it's a choice that you keep making again and again and again. I really like what you said about every day you're going to get back on that wagon. So it's really, it really is a choice that you, you have to get back on that wagon every day. And it's not a set it and forget it type of thing, right? Yep, that's good. I mean, just like you said, every day you can get back on the wagon and, and one action creates the motivation to take another action. So just right. Right. So, so what about you personally? I know you mentioned that you started with Isogenics. Um, you were 15 pounds overweight. Where do you currently struggle with your health and fitness? I think this is really good because it, it also kind of humanizes you a little bit showing that, hey, you know, Lindsay Milano is not perfect either. I still have to get back on the wagon. I still struggle. So where do you struggle and, and what's your strategy to get past that? I mean, I, I think there are a couple areas that I struggle. Sometimes it's, you know, working out. I'm, I'm not a big cardio fan. So sometimes I know that I should be doing more cardio. Um, sometimes it's a nagging injury that keeps me from getting outside. Running is usually my choice of cardio. And there are times that, you know, you just, you get in a rhythm and it's easy to do. You get up every morning and do it. But if you get out of it for a day or two, it makes it even harder to go back to it. Um, so, I mean, I, I think the way that I deal with that is just being active in other ways, like a, being a strength coach, I'm, I'm in the gym already. So I, and I like to lift. So typically then my, my workouts will be strength training, but I might go through it a little bit quicker to keep my heart rate up and get that cardio or just be more active with my kids and, and just, you know, telling myself that it's okay if I'm not running three days a week, or if I'm not doing this workout class, just be active other ways and don't be sedentary. Um, other ways that, you know, I, I think people think because I have a nutrition business that I eat perfect all the time and, and I love food. I love my shakes, but I love real food too. And, and with four kids, we go through McDonald's once in a while. We eat a lot of pizza, um, you know, so just, and sometimes that can get out of control, especially around the holidays um, when there's a lot of family gatherings and cookouts. Um, but luckily we have a, a nutritional cleansing system that helps us um, get rid of toxins in the body and it just nourishes our body's own detoxification system. So when you do that, 
um, you know, toxins are stored in your fat cells. So when you are detoxifying, not only you're shrinking the fat cells, but you're also leaving your body open to absorb the good nutrition that you're going to then going to fuel your body with. And so it just, it just helps with those cravings and just your overall energy levels um, to do an intermittent fast or some type of um, cellular cleansing occasionally. So that's, that's usually how I get back on track as far as the eating side of things. Mm, sounds good. Yeah. Definitely having that cleanse kind of in your back pocket is a really valuable asset. Um, so you mentioned strength training as your Kind of modality of choice it definitely is for me too i'm not a big fan of i call it straight line cardio like either you know the bike or the rowing machine or the treadmill you're just going yeah. front to back only there's no diversity of range of motion um what is kind of your your go-to as far as lifting what like what's your routine look like in a typical week for weightlifting? um right now I'm, I'm lifting three days a week and i just I don't really have a program that I follow. Sometimes I'll create my own, but sometimes I'll just go in the gym and think of two or three lower body exercises that I can do um, somewhere in the six to 12 rep range. Um, then two upper body exercises and a couple core exercises. I don't, my workouts are never longer than an hour. Most of the time it's, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, but enough to get a good sweat going and, um, you know, just feel that burn and feel like I actually did something and I can see the results from it. So just, just picking like a push and a pull for lower body, same thing for upper body and, and then working on my core. Nice. So you're doing full body each time you're kind of, uh, kind of intuitive weightlifting. Like, what do I feel like doing today? But it is structured because you have, like you said, your push, your pull, you're hitting all the major muscle groups. That's good. Yeah. I do like keeping track of you know, I don't always write it down, but if I, if I create my own program, I will write down my weights just, you know, maybe do like a five or six week block so I can see that I'm progressing and maybe mm -hmm. go from, you know, like a bilateral to a unilateral exercise just so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm keeping things balanced and, and definitely progressing that way. But nice. That makes sense. That's a good idea. Um, so Lindsay, we've talked a lot about health, nutrition, uh, fitness, we're going to go a little bigger picture now to, to wrap it up. So let's say like a university or a corporation has hired you to give a motivational speech, one to two minute motivational speech. So what does that, what does that sound like? Go big picture, go like goal setting or meaning of life, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to kind of let you go whatever direction you want, but what would your one to two minute motivational speech be? Okay. Um, we've talked about it a little bit before my, my top tip would be to start small, do something that you can manage day after day until it becomes a habit. Don't compare yourself to what everyone else is doing. Um, you know, like I said, stay in your lane. Don't do the comparison game, stay off social media. I mean, not that you have to stay off social media. There's a lot of good stuff out there that you can, can find, but, um, you know, go back to your why, figure out if, if your health goal is, for example, to lose weight. We, our team calls it the seven layer why. So if, just ask yourself, why do I wanna lose weight? Why do I want the scale to say that specific number? Say it's, so my genes fit better. Why do I want my genes to fit better? That would be the second level. And you just do that seven times until you get to a very internal emotional why that's gonna be something that you can go back to you know, when you fall off the wagon, well, why did I start this in the first place? And then leave yourself reminders. Sometimes it'll be a sticky note on the refrigerator or your bathroom mirror or the console of your car, just your, your very deep seventh layer why, why you wanna lose weight, why you are making these changes to build a healthier lifestyle. Is it to just be more confident so that you can be healthier with your kids, you know, long-term, teach them how to eat healthy, whatever it may be start small and, and figure out your why for that health goal that you have. And, you know, if it's that you just need something simple to follow, I would love to help you. We have, you know, the shakes that I've been using, our detoxification system. It, it's just been a simple, convenient, easy system to follow. And, you know, anybody can incorporate it into their lifestyle as well. And it's super easy. So just start simple, stay in your own lane and, and figure out that why. Nice. Sounds good. So, uh, Lindsay, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, what's your website, social media? Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Lindsay Milano. And my website is lindsaymilano.isogenics.com. 
Sounds good. Uh, Lindsay, thank you so much for joining me today. Again, Health in the Real World podcast. We have Lindsay Milano here and uh, reach out, contact her with all your health and fitness questions. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.